Welcome to today's presentation, Applying the Science of the Positive to Strategic Communication, the third webinar in the Social Norms webinar series, Using the Science of the Positive to Increase Your Community Impact. We would like to note that today's presentation is provided free of charge and is available in the public domain. Also, the information presented today are the views and opinions of Sarah Thompson and do not reflect the official position of HHS or SAMHSA. Please let us know if you have any questions about the information in this disclaimer. It is my pleasure to introduce our presenter today. Sarah Thompson is a senior trainer with the Montana Institute who specializes in training and technical assistance with positive community norms communication. Sarah was introduced to Dr. Jeff Lingenbach's work with the Science of the Positive and Positive Community Norms, or PCN, frameworks in 2006. These transformative new approaches challenged her perceptions, reignited her passion for prevention leadership, and renewed her energy for her work. Building on her experience as a strategic marketing consultant serving large and small companies, nonprofit organizations, cooperatives, festivals, and community events, she began working with community coalitions in her home state of Minnesota to prevent underage drinking and other drug use by applying the PCN network framework. Through the Montana Institute, she offers consultation, training, tool development, and technical support to communities who are applying the science of the positive process and positive community norms approach to prevention and is, featured, is a featured trainer and faculty member of the annual Montana Summer Institute in Big Sky. Sarah is privileged to collaborate with some of the most experienced prevention specialists, innovative thought leaders, and cutting edge social science researchers in the country. I will now turn the time over to Sarah Thompson. Wow, thank you, Taylor. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be back with you today. This is, I guess, step three of our three-part series that the Montana Institute has been able to um, provide for you. So this is awesome. As I said, or as Taylor said, I'm Sarah Thompson from the Montana Institute. And here's a little bit about me. She did a great job of explaining kind of who I am and where I come from. Here are some things that I love. Of course, I, I love my family. Um, my husband of 20 years, we actually have an anniversary this week, our 20 year anniversary. And I am totally into food. Just last night, we dove into our first batch of sauerkraut that we you know, had fermenting in the crock and we're able to put that together. Um, fun fitness and this is my pup, Frankie. And I live um, in far Northern Minnesota in War Road, which is right on the border, on the Canadian border. And so that water that you're looking at there is um, Lake of the Woods. Some of you might be familiar with that. The ideas and theories that we are presenting today really come from Dr. Jeff Linkenbach. He is the director and research scientist of the Montana Institute. He's been an incredible mentor for me. And he's the founder of the Science of the Positive Framework and Positive Community Norms Approach. He's also the co-author of Hope, Healthy Outcomes from Positive Experiences, he has all kinds of years of experience in research and health promotion and has developed several award-winning programs. If you were on the first session of this three-part series, um, you were able to interact with Dr. Linkenbach as he was the presenter during that series. Today, we're talking about applying the science of the positive to strategic communications. So you have had an introduction Part one was an introduction to the science of the positive. Part two was more about positive community norms and this idea of perceptions and misperceptions, right? And how they guide our actions. Today is a quick review of those two things because I realize there are probably people on this call who were not on the first or second, or maybe you missed one of them. And it's always good to have a refresher to kind of get your mind back into um, these frameworks. So just know that that is how we're going to start. And we're really going to dive into balancing hope and concern. This is the strategic communication that we're going to learn today. And it's something that I hope you will begin to use immediately and find really 
useful and impactful in the way that you communicate, whether that be on a big billboard or whether that be with a colleague or your family or your community members. This idea of balancing hope and concern and really practicing that, being purposeful and practicing that has been an extremely useful tool for me in my work with the, the Montana Institute and working with coalitions throughout the nation who are um, doing this work as well. So let's get into our review. First, the science of the positive framework. What is this? If you remember, we talk about the science of the positive as being a study of how positive factors impact culture and experience. Here's what I personally love about the science of the positive is that it really focuses in on the science. There are so many of us who might be very positive by nature, and there's probably some of us who are not necessarily as positive by nature, right? This is, how do we measure that? How do we measure the positive? How do we grow the positive? We base it on this core assumption that you'll hear a couple times today. The positive is real. It can be measured. It can grow, and it's worth growing in ourselves, our families, workplaces, and communities. This is the cycle of transformation. This is a very simplified version of what that science of the positive framework looks like. And it begins with spirit first. Then we move into science and action and return. We focus on, on public health, right? So public health and public health 101 in its like simplest granular form. There are all kinds of things that, that fall under public health, but really it's about reducing risks and increasing protections. And with the science of the positive, we believe in those same things, right? And, and we're talking about our concern and our hope. Again, the core assumption of the science of the positive is that that positive exists and it's worth growing. Many of us are working with issues and, and communities who, who are suffering, right? There is tragedy, there is loss, there, is in, there are injustices, there is shame, there, there is stigma. There are all of these things, right? And there, there are devastating things happening in our neighborhoods, in our families, right? We are here because we're very concerned about those things and we wanna make a difference. And so we need to also remember that even in those very trying and challenging and concerning times and places and moments and existences, the positive is also there. It also exists. And that is worth growing. Dr. Linkenbach says, if we want health, we must promote health. We talked about this the last time. In prevention, oftentimes, we forget that we can promote health. And so some of our imagery, if we are looking at reducing car crashes due to impaired driving, we might show the very behavior that we are trying to prevent, right? We might actually show somebody behind the um, wheel who obviously shouldn't be. We might show a car crash. We might show if we are looking at reducing underage vaping, a bunch of kids vaping or the vaping products, right? In prevention, we, our default oftentimes is to show the very behavior that we are looking to prevent. And so Dr. Linkenbach reminds us, if we want health, we must promote health. We think about our work through both the lens of change and transformation. And so while we wanna make a difference, we wanna move the dial on our data while we are funded or, or through this grant cycle or through these goals and objectives, right? By in the next three years, we want to um, increase the amount of students who are not using by 3% or whatever those are, those are changes, right? And, and important that we um, focus on those and we have those goals. And we also need to remember that 
our goal, our ultimate goal is transformation. Like we want our communities to be a different place than they were when we first began this work. A transformation like a butterfly cannot go back to being a caterpillar. We want our communities to not be able to go back to what they were, right? And we can use these seven core principles that you have likely heard about um, to help guide our actions, train our minds, think through our purposes, right? So we think about being positive, meaning, um, you know, this is our focus. We, we have this core assumption. We are working from the core assumption that the positive exists and it is worth growing and we want to be present, right? And being present often aligns with what is step two of the communications model for positive community norms work. It's baseline data. And so we'll look at our data in the lens of what's happening here, right? And we look at both what our norms are and some of our um, non-norms. And oftentimes our concerns show up maybe in the uh, non-norm realm, okay? So, but, but we really look at this and, and we're present and we're looking at our environment through this idea of what's happening here, what's happening now, okay? And we wanna be perceptive. How are other people um, interpreting the environment right now? What experiences are they bringing to this that can um, bring a, a different idea of how you're experiencing the environment? We wanna be perceptive. We wanna be purposeful and per perfected, not perfect. Being perfected is really about being humble enough to not be perfect. We are looking to and, and moving forward to always being perfected, improving, taking what we have learned and moving that into the next step, right? So we can be proactive and we can bring our passion. Positive community norms approach is an application of the science of the positive framework. So with this approach, we first look to uncover strengths, spirit first, right? Then our science is to measure the gaps. As I said, we're looking at our data through the lens of um, what, are the, what are the norms, right? And then what are the perceptions of those norms? And is there a gap? Where we find gaps, that's where we challenge the misperceptions. And because we can correct those misperceptions, we have an opportunity to increase health. Here's what it looks like in the form of a logic model that shows effort and time. And you'll notice this through line of the green arrow. We talked about the green arrow before with Public Health 101, right? Where we are increasing the protections. And the same is true with the science of the positive. We have concern, a red arrow, and hope, a green arrow, right? So it is this green arrow that is our through line of our logic model. So social norms theory says we tend to do or believe what we think most other people do or believe, right? That's our perceived norm. But often what we think most other people do is wrong. So norms theory will have on this left side, we will be measuring the actual behavior or attitude of the majority of the population, what most people do or believe. So a question on a youth survey might look like this. How often do you drink alcohol? Then we're also going to measure the perceived norm, the perceived behavior or attitude of most people, what we think most people do or believe. So a question on that survey might look like this. How often do most students in your school drink alcohol? Oftentimes what happens is we get answers like, I drink alcohol or I don't drink alcohol, but I think most others do, right? And there is a gap there. So when we are misperceiving the amount of students, if we are thinking everybody drinks alcohol or all the kids are vaping or um, all, everyone has used marijuana, right? I'm the only one who has it. 
that kind of misperception can increase the likelihood of participating in the behavior. So the main purpose of a positive community norms message is to mind the gap. It is to correct the misperception of those norms. And so we put out messages. This is an example of a billboard that simply state, most Hubbard County students don't use marijuana. We know from our data that most Hubbard County students think most others are using marijuana at a, at a really high rate. And so our goal with this billboard is to correct that misperception help more students understand that not everybody is using. Here's an example from a community college, not far from where I live, Rainy River Community College in Northern Minnesota in International Falls. Their brand is, we are Voyager Strong. They are the Voyagers. And they um, put out this message for new students who are coming onto the campus. Most new Rainy River Community College students believe it's okay to come to college and choose not to drink. They got this information through an injunctive norm survey that they conducted during the orientation, right? So they found out from orientation, they asked kids, hey, do you think it's okay to come to college and choose not to drink? And 87% said, yep. We also found that there was a huge misperception. They didn't think most other students would also agree with that. And so we put out messages like this as they come in for their you know, very first month of school. Guess what, guys? It's okay to come to college and choose not to drink. And most of us believe that. Perception is everything. And therefore, so too are misperceptions. If we are able to correct those misperceptions, we're able to bring our prevention work onto an equal playing field. Misperceptions of norms is a hidden risk factor. That's a quick overview of the science of the positive and positive community norms approach. We're going to really focus in on this cycle of transformation today and even be more laser focused onto this whole idea of spirit first. What does that mean, right? We begin with this place of being positive, hopeful, and energy giving. So we start with spirit first is like who we are. And we can use those seven core principles that I showed you, be positive, be present, be perceptive, be perfected, to think about who we are through the lens of those things. We can also think about why we care, why we do what we do, right? This is our spirit first. Um, this is how we start. Like, why does it matter to us? And so when I think about spirit first, why did I get into this? Um, why is this work that I do so meaningful to me? It really comes from this place of hope and concern. I, it begins with a deep concern for my own child, who I know our family has a history of substance use and abuse. And my own child, I, I wanted to, to make an impact and have a significant influence in stopping this cycle of use and abuse with my kid, right? Like I do not want him to be suffering in the way that my family has suffered in the past. This is a deep place of concern for me and I have a hope that this can stop. There are really positive things happening in his environment and in our community that can help him make healthy and safe choices as he grows up, right? So I have this balance of both hope and concern as my why, and they live side by side. So while we come to our work oftentimes and we come to our prevention work um, from this deep place of concern, we cannot forget the hope. We need to bring that balance up. The other thing that we need to do is some of us can get really fired up about the hope and 
not really pay as close of attention to the concern as we maybe should. And we can be viewed maybe as a little Pollyanna-ish, stick your head in the sand, not you know, seeing what's really happening out there, right? You're only talking about the, the people who are making those healthy decisions, right? So we can, we can find ourselves in those places. So as positive community norms practitioners, we are constantly looking at this balance of hope and concern, concern and hope. Where there is great hope, there's also great concern. And where there's great concern, there's also great hope. So we need to find this balance. And today we're really going to look at, we're going, uh, I'm gonna give you some time to work on your own on creating these narratives that do balance hope and concern. So here's an example of some hope and concern communications or narratives or statements, right? So we might say, I'm hopeful because the majority of our community members feel safe when they walk in our city. We have a, a safe feeling city for most people. And I am concerned because there are some people who don't even feel safe in their own neighborhoods in our community. This balance of hope and concern living side by side. I'm concerned, red arrow, right? Because so many parents seem to have the attitude, kids will be kids when it comes to underage substance use. I did it when I was a kid that I turned out okay. I'm concerned that so many parents have that kind of an attitude and I'm hopeful because most students think their parents would feel it was wrong for them to use marijuana, right? So we've got this balance of both hope and concern. In some cases, we're, we're directly referencing some of our data, right? Like this is a, a perception of harm data or a perception of, um, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm missing it, I apologize. But, but what, are my parents, what are my parents gonna think if I'm using these things? They're gonna think it's wrong, right? Um, so perception of parental disapproval, there we go. Um, so, so some of our data can be brought into these hope and concern statements. I'm concerned because the number of students who vape seem to be increasing rapidly, right? Over the course of the last four years or so, like the increase of students who are vaping has been pretty steady. And I'm hopeful because there are tobacco and vaping policies that are now in place to help protect these youth, right? It's this balance of both hope and concern. And we're pairing them together with this word and on purpose, because we're not saying but, we're not saying however, we're not saying yet, or whatever else we could use to join those, we're saying and. And that's intentional, because we want them to feel like they're equal, right? It's an equal space. I'm concerned and I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful and I'm concerned. So, we're going to go um, into an activity and I want you to, uh, we're just looking at a video. I'm gonna play for you a video from the Red Lake Nation, which is here in Northern Minnesota. And I just wanna offer this quote from Thomas Barrett Jr. from the Red Lake Nation. This place is beautiful. I refuse to see it any other way. And I'm gonna show you this beautiful video that um, Dr. Linkenbach was instrumental in helping the Red Lake Nation put together. And I want you to look at it through the lens of where do you see hope and where do you see concern and how are they coming together in this video? One day, as Mindy Mouye walked through the woods from her house to get to her town, she noticed along the way there was garbage laying around in her community. She noticed some strange things like syringes and empty liquor bottles. Mindy Mouye didn't like what she had seen. 
and when she returned home, she sat and thought of some ideas on how to help her community. The very next day, Minde Muye called other Minde Muyes. She invited them to have tea with her and wanted to meet and visit with them. The other Minde Muyes wondered what was so important why they were meeting together. So they all gathered as soon after the phone call. All of them sat and visited and had hot tea to warm them up. <laughs> then Minde Muye shared her concerns with all of them. She asked them to help think of ways to clean the community and help the people. And they all prayed and asked the Creator to help them with their plan. Together, all of the Mende Muyes decided to have a big feast. They invited everyone to bring a dish to share with one another. On the day of the big feast, all of the Mende Muyes made fry bread in the kitchen and told stories. After the prayer and the drum songs, Mende Muye began to speak. Buju and Dinawe, Maganaduk, Mindy Muye, in Dao, Miss Guada Music, I got in in Dunjaba. That we do Kawashin, the Dunaway Mananik, Anin, Miss Again Damok, Onji Abajituad, Maji Mashkiki, Minawa, Ishkode Wabu, that we do Kodad Da, Mi Oma, Miss Guada Music, I got in, G. Mino Rimar Dizi Yang, Abajitu Si Wang. Maji Mashkiki Minawa Shkube Wabu Anishinabe Mashkawa Diziwak Mino Mashkiki Gita Yamin We Giga Zungizimin Minawa Giga Minobema Dizimin Gimisho Missin and Nanig Minawa Boko Missin and Nanig Giga Adizuke Dago Nananig Gida Yawa Asema Abadizi Gida Ando Damawa after the community started having gatherings, something wonderful started happening. Mende Muye seen changes in her community. She seen many people start to heal from sickness of drugs and alcohol. Mende Muye thanked the Creator for watching over her and the community and felt happy to be able to live a good life. Mende Muye, one who holds things together, she is the backbone of the family.
Thank you for watching. I actually get quite choked up when I watch that video. Um, this is an area not far from where I live. And I have seen firsthand the, I mean, a noticeable shift in the spirit um, when being there. And so, uh, I, I love this example of a really beautiful example of hope and concern. I can see that many of you um, did too. I would just like for you to share in the chat box when we talk about the idea of balancing both hope and concern. Where did you see some hope here, right? And where did you see some concern? How did those things come together for you? Some observations. One person can make a difference in a community and influence others, right? The hope was shining with the young girls, right? There's so much hope in youth, the hope for connection, um, hope in seeing those connections. There were concerns about members of the community, but hope that the community could come together, right? Concern and noticing the increased substance use. Um, hope was there from the beginning. Ah, oh, I love that, right? The solutions are in the community. It's already there. The hope was there from the beginning. Our youth is our tomorrow, connected communities. The power of tea <laughs> and the power of teamwork. These are great concern, right? Was the trash and the hope was the youth actively involved, a hope for healing and coming together. You all are just really honing in on the hope that came from this, right? A hope in friendship, not just their own family, but a hope for solidarity, right? Community engagement. Wow, these are great. You guys, um, I can tell we're connected to the video as well. So some things that I found, uh, there, there were some very specific concerns about substance use, about bad medicine, about how the community was um, sort of, right, there was, there was trash. There, they, they painted a picture of, hey, what is going on? This is not who they are, right? Um, but they really talked about when, when she was speaking at that event, we live a good life here. This is not who we are, is essentially what she was saying, right? We care about each other. We have our drums and we have our songs and we have our traditions and we have our grandfathers. We give thanks. And I don't know if you noticed when they were running on the side of the road and they had their red t-shirts on and they were their, their t-shirt said, mind, body, spirit. They have their traditions, right? There is hope and concern living side by side and focusing using that hope as the momentum, right? To help address how the community is hurting is um, inspiring. And it inspired an entire community to come together for community gatherings that were healthy. It inspired an entire community to come together and clean things up. It inspired people to seek out the help and support they needed, right? For making healthier and safer choices for themselves and the next generation. So we're gonna move into another activity. This is you um, integrating your own hope and concern with your 
your own um, issues, your own agency, your own coalition, um, whatever it is you're working on, now is your time to think about what's the hope and concern that I have. So what I want you to do is just take out a regular old piece of paper, regular old paper, or if you prefer to go digital, go digital. But essentially, all I want you to do is draw a line down the middle of this paper, right down the middle, and it's like a pros and cons list, but on the top, you're gonna write hope and you're gonna write concern. And I want you to take the next five minutes, we're seriously doing this right now on this call, we're just gonna go silent. And for the next five minutes, I want you to write down everything that you have, populate your hopes and write down your ideas for concerns. And so on this hope side, I want you to list all the facts and trends and cultural protections and signs of change that give you hope for your, um, for your issue, for your agency, for, for what you're working on, for your community, right? And on the other side, I want you to list all the facts, trends, cultural risk factors, signs of change that cause you concern. That's all we're doing right now. Just list your hopes and your concerns. You don't have to do hopes first or concerns first. You can just do it as they come. But take the next now four minutes, just in silence to brainstorm those things. And then we're going to work on these. Um, there's a next step for this. And I'll tell you what that is in about three minutes and 45 seconds. You can wrap up your brainstorming. You've got about another 30 seconds to just finish up your thoughts.
Okay. Now we're going to move on and we're going to work with both of these, both of these columns that you have populated, right? You now have some things you're hopeful about and some things you are concerned about. And now we're going to work on creating integrated messages. So we want to combine your hopes and concerns into messages. I'm going to give you the next five minutes on your own to just sort of practice this. One of the seven core principles is to be purposeful. We are purposefully practicing this. And so um, what you're going to do is take a look at your sheet and take one thing from the hope column and one thing from the concern column and put them together into an integrated message. And here's just a quick tip to make this easier as I did in some of the examples that I showed you earlier. Just use those words, hopeful and concerned. I am hopeful because, whatever it is, and remember that joining word, and I am concerned because, or you can start it with I am concerned because, and I'm hopeful because. So take the next four and a half minutes or so, I want you to really work on creating at least three integrated messages. And then we're gonna share those in the chat box when I say so, not right now, but just write them down and um, then we'll share some of those out. We've got about four minutes.
Okay, I'm gonna give you maybe another 25 seconds just to sort of wrap up um, your hope and concern messages and to start putting them in the chat box. I'd really love for um, you to share some of what you have done. I think I just moved myself back. Um, but yeah, please share your hope and concern message in the chat box. I'm gonna read a few of these. Wow, these are good. Um, I'm concerned because the childhood obesity rates in Alabama are high and I'm hopeful because children and the young are resilient, right? Children are young and resilient, good. I'm concerned because some parents in our community don't see cannabis use as harmful. And I am hopeful because there are laws in place to protect and prevent those whom are underage from buying and using cannabis products. Good. I'm concerned about people's too busy excuses and I'm hopeful for creative collaborations. Good. I'm concerned that people will experience disappointment and letdown in their life that they can't cope with. I'm hopeful that we can tap into and increase individuals' potential. Yeah. I'm concerned that youth are experiencing um, increased SI, but I'm hopeful because youth are engaging more in mental health awareness, right? Yes. I'm hopeful because people care about their families and pets. I'm concerned because, is that marijuana? Is promoted for everything, even arthritic type pain in dogs. Yeah, so some of you are, uh, so many of you have so many great hopes and concerns paired side by side. I wish I could read every single one of these, but there are so many. I'm hopeful because this generation is the healthiest ever in terms of substance use. So Faith says, but I'm concerned because cannabis use is not going down like alcohol and smoking, right? And now Faith, I'm, I'm gonna say something. So the word you used to join those two was but, and you're not the only one. I see a few others, you know, we rely on that word but all together too much. So try to practice joining that with and, right? I'm hopeful because this generation is the healthiest ever in terms of substance use. And I'm concerned because cannabis use is not going down like alcohol and smoke, right? There's a concern there. There was a question that came into the Q&A that I just want to address in regard to which should you start with? Like, is there some sort of idea that we should begin with hope or begin with concern? Is there a better way to do um, or, or a best practice for doing this. And really what it is, is to meet your audience where they are at. So I gave the example in the Q and A that if you are, you know, at an event or, or at a meeting or talking with somebody where there is very deep concern about the issue, um, certainly begin with concern, right? Like meet people where they're at, yes. I am concerned about this cannabis use. It's not going down like alcohol and smoking. And I'm hopeful because this generation is the healthiest ever in terms of substance use. So what happens is we meet people where they're at. We acknowledge, yep, I'm right there with you. Like, yes, there is, we have some things we need to be very concerned about. And when we bring that hope in, that has the opportunity to elevate the conversation to working towards solutions, if that makes sense. The opposite is also true. So you get somebody like me who maybe is completely unaware 
that there is an issue. So I'm just, I'm just making this up that there are issues with cannabis use and youth, right? Like, let's just say I have no idea. And so I might start with the hope, hey, yeah, you're right. I'm hopeful because this generation is the healthiest ever in terms of substance use. And I'm concerned because cannabis use is actually not going down like alcohol and smoking, right? So then we have the opportunity to engage that person or, or the organization or, or whatever it is into a conversation about, okay, let's take a look at where are these concerns, if that makes sense. So it, it also is a tool that we can use as communicators to bring the conversation where we want it to go. We can lead the conversation toward hope, toward solutions, toward you know, finding this inspiration that you found in that video, right? That's what we came away with in that video. And so often it's that hope that gives us the energy to move forward. If in our conversations, we only talk about how horrible everything is and we do not offer this glimmer of hope, we, we leave people feeling hopeless. Like there isn't anything that we can do, right? And so it's, it's a balance of both hope and concern and it's a practice of, of doing just that. Like, what does it look like if I start with hope and end with concern? And what does it look like if I begin with concern and end with hope? And I will also tell you this, I am willing to um, bet <laughs> that you will probably find yourself saying a concerning statement today. And then you're gonna say, oh, and I'm hopeful. Or it might be the opposite way. Like I am, con I am hopeful and I have this concern, right? It, it's a practice now that we have done some of this and it's something that I hope that you can see can be valuable in moving forward and immediate strategic communication to balance both hope and concern with your issues. Now I'm gonna give you a few examples. We're gonna end with a few examples about how, what does this look like in positive community norms messaging? We showed you um, over the course of the last two sessions, a bunch of posters and billboards and social media posts and videos and that sort of thing. What does it look like when we take that positive community norms message, the positive norm and match it with some of these concerns? And I'm gonna give you a few examples of what that looks like or what it has looked like in different communities. So this, is, um, this comes from Washington, their organization or, or their campaign, most steer clear, right? And so we have a, a very big hope. 89% of young adults do not drive after marijuana use. This is a hopeful statement. And the concern, right, is to remember impairment can last at least six to eight hours. So there's room for both hope and concern. This is an intentional use of hope and concern in this message. This is an example of a sort of sticker shock campaign. If you're unfamiliar with what that is, it's where you walk into a liquor store and whoa, there are stickers on every sort of case of um, beer or bottle of alcohol and they are reminding you to not serve alcohol to youth, right? Or do not provide alcohol to youth. And typically a sticker shock campaign happens around um, you know, one of the holidays where there might be more likelihood of of underage substance use. So this is a little different take on that shock of, you know, the punitive, hey, if you serve or if you provide alcohol to somebody, you're gonna end up in jail, right? Here's another example. Most Little Falls students would rather not drink alcohol when hanging out with friends. That's our hope. Like, hey guys, guess what? Most of the kids don't wanna do this anyway. Let's support their choice. And here's the concern. Don't forget providing alcohol to a minor in Minnesota is illegal and punishable by up to a year in jail and a $3,000 fine. There's another example of hope and concern, right? Most Deer River High School students don't vape or use commercial tobacco. Keep tobacco sacred. So this is an example of a campaign that went up in um, a high school. And the first poster on the left side went up um, 
first. And, and so it was up all by itself for a few days. Most Roseau County High School students would support a friend for choosing not to use marijuana. Why I choose not to? Because it's illegal. And so then the youth involved with this campaign really thought it was important to say, what does it mean to be illegal, right? And so then a couple of days later, this second poster came up that said, let's talk about how marijuana is never legal for teens, not even where it's legal. It's not currently legal. Recreational marijuana is not currently legal in Minnesota. Um, so Anyway, this is an example of balancing hope. Most would support a friend for choosing not to use, why I choose not to, and the concern. Here's all the stuff. This is why we're concerned about it. This is an example that comes from Oakland University, just outside of Detroit, Michigan. Um, they really are concerned about the mental health of students on their campus and that, and that come to school there. And they found through their research that there's a lot to be concerned about. Like the students aren't necessarily aware of where the resources are. The students don't feel like people want them to talk about it, right? And so they're really looking to help open that conversation. And so this is a door hanger. They put these on the dorm rooms, right? Especially during COVID, they didn't have an opportunity to meet with, with these students like they used to. So they were really looking for ways to connect with them. So here were some door hangers. Um, connecting with others helps when you're feeling anxious or depressed, right? And here's their norm statement. 88% of OU students believe their friends would make time to talk if they felt depressed or anxious, right? And here's some other things that you can do. Isolation doesn't mean doing life alone. Here's some suggested things. Here are places you can go, right? If you're, if you're feeling anxious or depressed. So, um, and by the way, we've got some positive norm shirts that we can give out. So this goose, they named positive norm. He is the ambassador for their campaign. Um, and he shows up on just about all of their materials. He is their brand. Here's another way to balance both hope and concern. These showed up on the back of bathroom stalls in a local high school. Two out of three Lake of the Woods students say no to things that are dangerous or unhealthy. That comes right from the Minnesota Student Survey. Here's the facts. Marijuana can be addictive. It can cause depression. It can be laced with other harmful substances. It can lower your IQ. Here's another example of this. Most Lake of the Woods students plan ahead and make good choices, framing it in the norm right? Guys, think about it. What will you do if you're offered marijuana? How can you support each other to say no? What can you do instead of using substances? Basically, this poster is saying, look, guys, we know that most of you plan ahead and make good choices. Have you thought about what you would do in these situations? Right? And of course, those are like, there's a lot on that poster. That's not just a like drive by kind of a billboard. That one, you need to have some room for people to read. Okay, here's another example of balancing hope and concern. This is a direct mail postcard that went out to um, parents of middle schoolers in Park Rapids. So the, the front of the postcard said, hey, 85% of Park Rapids middle school students agree that parents should talk with them about the importance of not using alcohol. Now on that back side, here's where we're balancing hope and concern. We're framing it in the hope of most Park Rapids teens are choosing not to use alcohol. That's the first thing we want people to know, right? This is great news. However, oh, there I used however. We should have used and. Um, parents and guardians should continue to monitor their children because all students are at risk, right? And here are some ways that you can monitor your child. Um, 86%, here's the volume two. There are actually four of these. I'm not going through all four of them, but I just wanna show you a couple examples. 86% of Park Rapids Middle School students would rather not drink alcohol when hanging out with friends. So again, the backside, we're framing this in the norm. Most Park Rapids High School students choose not to use alcohol. It can still be hard for students to say no to their peers. As parents, you can help your child learn ways to say no. And so, you know, we give them some role-playing opportunity there. So again, it's this balance of hope and concern and finding places like a direct mail postcard, 
like a poster that is on the back of a bathroom stall, like a video that you know people might be creating, where there's more opportunity to create that balance of both hope and concern. Not losing sight of the fact that the purpose of a positive community norms message is to close that gap, right? It's to correct the misperception. So that positive norm needs to be front and center and there's room to balance both hope and concern. We cannot lose sight of the fact that the positive exists and it's worth growing. So with that, you can again jump into the chat box. I'm interested in just hearing from you. What are some of your reflections? What are some of the big things you learned or heard today? And then we'll have opportunity for question and answer, um, a few other things. But if you wanna just hop into the chat box right now and mention what are some of the big things you learned or heard today that you could share with others? Balance, mm -hmm. positive front. PCN can still include the hard hitting facts. Yeah, we just aren't sugarcoating. We're not, we're not just all about being Pollyanna and ignoring the problem, right? That's not what we're doing. A colleague of mine um, says we're, we're done admiring the problem. We're not ignoring the problem and we're not admiring Using and instead of but in messaging. Yes, learned how, how much we all use the word but, yes, instead of and. Hope is a motivating influence. Thanks. As a teetotaler, I always wonder what the parents and adults think when both parents and adults drink alcohol at a party or a restaurant. How can they teach their kids without following that behavior? Yeah, yeah, so there's this, this balance of how does this happen? Right, and it, it makes you think. And, and when you can think about those types of things through this lens of both hope and concern, um, that's important. This is good. Focusing on the gap makes it feel manageable. Yeah, keeping in mind, Bobby, that the gap is something that we want to be able to measure, right? So in our data, in our surveys, being able to make sure that we have perception of norm questions in them really helps for managing that gap, for focusing on the gap. So how often do you, whatever it is, how often do you think most others, whatever it is? Or how do you feel about this statement? How do you think others, most others in your community feel about this statement? Most other students in your school feel about this statement, right? Those, that's the way that we can find and, and measure those gaps. And oftentimes what happens when we're engaging in positive community norms campaigns, and this is, I guess, if, if we had a fourth webinar, we could talk about this, but um, it's really about first a campaign awareness. We need to have an awareness of, oh my gosh, I've seen that message that most don't use alcohol in a typical month. I'll just use that because it's easy off the tip of my tongue. I've seen it. Then what happens is we start to challenge that misperception. The, the perception starts to shift, right? And once that happens, that's when our behavior follows. If you remember back to some of the data from time, our, our second time together, I mentioned that there's analysis that happens with these data that show um, students who believe most other students are using are much more likely to use themselves. Parents who believe most other parents are allowing other kids to drink at home in a safe space are more likely to do that as well, right? Parents who believe most other parents don't use curfews are more likely to not use a curfew. This is, this is sort of human nature. Perception is everything and therefore so do our misperceptions, right? Okay, getting back to what you guys are talking about. Um, concerns aren't inherently negative. No, that's so true, Ashley, right? That's so true, very good. 
Keep it positive. No more buts. <laughs> yeah, these are great. Thank you, guys. I learned a lot. One thing that stands out is the use of words, balancing in, yes, and writing concern and hope in sentences. Perceptions are important. Great. So I'm going to stop talking and um, move it over to question and answer and remind you that the montanainstitute.com is a great resource for you. Um, I don't believe the Minde Mounier video that we showed is on that website. I can, I'm happy to share a link with um, Taylor and Rory who are administering this and they could share that out. Um, that's absolutely fine. It's a beautiful video. Um, just making sure that you know, you're know you you're keeping the credits and things on there. So we wanna honor people's work. Um, but you can also find a few other sort of case studies and lots of other information here. If you are looking for more resources or looking to have a conversation about what does this look like in community or in organizations or what would it look like if you have some ideas on, on where this could go, um, you're welcome to contact me and we'll, I'll get you hooked up with the next steps on exploring what this looks like. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining us today and thank you so much, Sarah.